walked among the shadows You wiped my tears away And I felt the pain of heartbreak And I've seen the brighter days And I prayed prayers to heaven At my lowest place And I have held the blessings God, you give and take away No matter what I have, your grace is enough No matter where I am, I'm standing in your love On the mountain high, I will build my life to the one who set me there In the valley high, I will lift my eyes to the one who sees me there When I'm standing on the mountain high, I didn't give broken in you I hope again no matter what I know I'm safe inside your hands on the mountain I will bow my life to the one who sent me there in the valley I will lift my eyes to the one who sees me there when I'm standing Walked among the shadows, you wiped my tears away, and I felt the pain of heartbreak, and I've seen the brighter days, and I prayed prayers to heaven at my lowest place, and I have held the blessings, God, you give and take away, no matter what. Good morning. Good morning. 
Once again, welcome to welcome, service. Welcome, welcome. Amen. We just want to just take this time to welcome you. And you know what? We've been worshiping the God of the hills and the valley. Amen. And I want you to know that you can begin to believe for whatever God has said. Believe right. and let God have his way. Amen. So let's get ready to go in to worship with our hands lifted and our hearts lifted. Believing yes. God to win our lives. Amen. Let's go worship the king. See you inside. Your hands in the room and cry out to the Lord in this place. Cry out. Whoa. They say this mountain can't be moved. They say these chains will never break. But they don't know you like we do. There is power in your that there is no way through we've heard the tide will never change they haven't seen what you can do there is power in your name so much power in your name 
Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, we just want to take this time and just encourage you. You know, we've just concluded our, we just Hallelujah. concluded our, um, our worship. We just in concluded our time of fasting and prayer. And Hallelujah. let me say this. You know what? We're still believing. We're Come still on. we're still trusting. We're still moving forward in the Lord. Amen. And I want you to tap in because guess what? Though we've given the first portion of this year to fasting and prayer, I trust that that you were believing and praying to God for some things to do in you and through you. But guess what? It's not over yet. Come on. It's not over. It's just beginning. And it's time for us, the Heart for the World family, Heart fam, it's time for us to put our faith Come into on. action and to believe. And just like we've been preaching about this family series, God is trying to minister to us so that we can elevate, so that we can be used of him. Amen. Amen. And so and so now as we begin to shift gears, Amen. if you will, part of God equipping us because Heart for the World is a place where we live, where we love and where we learn kingdom principles. principles. And those kingdom principles are learned through our pulse groups and and, and, and through our midweek services and Amen. just through the things that we're teaching. And so I want to encourage you to join into our pulse groups this week. If you will, hallelujah, we roll back into uh, Celebrate Recovery Come Tuesday on. night at 7 p.m., amen? And so I need you to tap in, if you will, to that. If you will, make sure you've signed up for that, and we yes. will send you the link, and we'll go from there. We have um, uh, not only that, but we have couples or relationship, if you will, coming up. That will be every other Thursday. Amen. We'll have apologetics coming in, and then we'll have of uh, the financial, if you will, foundation through Dave Ramsey. We want you to tap in. Yes, we do. We want you to be a part. Amen. Amen. And so not only that, but we have what? Tennis Joy. Amen. We have God's will on earth. These are outreaches and outflows, yes. if you will, of heart for the world. Amen. And what God has called us to do. I need you to let God be glorified Amen. in every aspect of your life. That's right. Just let him have his way. You know, and make sure that you don't just keep it to yourself, that you tell somebody else. Just like as we're getting ready to go into service. If you have not gathered your family and your loved ones and called everybody and text everybody, now is the time to do that. Amen. So that we can all begin to uh, worship together and go through the word of God together. Now, you know what? Truly hard for the world. It, you know what? Aurora, Colorado is the most diverse city in the nation, if you will. And we are desiring that Heart for the World would Come be on. very diverse. We want it to, to be multicultural, multi-generational. You know, so we want you to begin to reach out and to begin to invite your friends and your families. We want, if you will, uh, Heart for the World to look like heaven's going to look. And guess what? Everybody's going to be there. Amen. And so let's let's get about the king's business. Amen. Amen. So prepare your hearts and your minds now as we are standing here to be get ready to give unto the kingdom of God. Because in all of these things that we have going on, yes, there's a pandemic, but we still must move forward in the things of the kingdom of God. So we want you to prepare your heart and your mind to give unto the kingdom. You know, if you want to harvest, you have to plant seed. And so we're saying at this time, ask God, what seed are you supposed to plant? Now, the seed is over and above your tithe and offering. That's, that's what we're supposed to do. That's the floor, each and every one of us. But what would God have you to plant unto the kingdom of God? Amen. That we might further the work of the kingdom. You know, as some of you guys might think, well, it'll just happen. But we're telling you this morning, we need everybody's hands and everybody's hearts. And we need you to be faithful in what you are doing, that we can be faithful uh, in doing what God has called us to do. So prepare your hearts and your minds to get ready to give because we are blessed to be a blessing to the kingdom of God, guess what? And that's not just me, but that's you too. You know what? We're better together. We can do better together. Amen? Amen. So let's get ready to give into the kingdom. I 
walked among the shadows You wiped my tears away And I felt the pain of heartbreak And I've seen the brighter days And I prayed prayers to heaven Had my lowest place And I have held the blessings God, you give and take away No matter what I have, your grace is enough No matter where I am, I'm standing in your love On the mountain high, what about my life to the one who set me there In the valley high, will lift my eyes to the one who sees me there When I'm standing on the mountain high, I didn't give the Lord. We have the chance to give into the kingdom of God. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand praise. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. And you know, as we, before we get ready to pray over this offering, I want you to remember, if you do not have the church app, please go to church one, go to Heart for the World Christian Center and download the church app so that you would have access to all of these things that God has blessed us with. Amen. But right now, stretch your hands out till you're given as Pastor Ryan gets ready to pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray. Lord, that the seed that has been sown is supernatural. Heavenly Father, and I pray, God, that it will have a supernatural impact, Lord. As we sow the seed, Lord, our financial seed, as yes. we sow the seed, we attach, Lord, a financial belief that you're going to take it and cause Thank there you, to Jesus. be a return, 30, 60, and 100 fold. God, I pray, God, that this would be a yoke-breaking seed. I pray, Heavenly Father, Lord, that this seed, Lord, would go across the world and lives would be forever changed. Now, yes. Lord, return unto the giver, 30, 60, and 100 fold. Be glorified, God, in all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Hallelujah. Well, we are excited about what God is doing. And just as we have planted seed into the kingdom, we are preparing for our confession of faith. Amen. <clears throat> we are believing God to do certain things in our life. We are believing God to open certain doors. We are believing God to manifest things. And so, you know what? We have just come off of this fast and we are excited about what God has brought us through. Amen. And where he has taken us to. And so as we confess this, I want you to say it like you really mean it. You know, if we were in the building, you would be on your feet. Come right on. where you are, stand sitting in your, your house. Come on. I want you to stand on yes. your feet right now. Yes, Amen. Because yes, yes. you know what? When you really mean something, you take a stance. And I want you to take a stance as we get ready to confess our faith to the Lord. Amen. Because we believe that yes. he can do it. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's prepare for our confession of faith. You ready? Come on. People, People are standing, standing in line, line to, to get, get into Heart for the, the World Christian, Christian Center. Christian Center. To hear the word of God. Every seat is filled in every service. Sunday morning worship, Wednesday night Bible study, and any other service that we might have with the expectations of signs, wonders, and miracles. Every need in this ministry is met, and we are 100% tithe givers. We own our own worship center, which houses men's, women's, youth, children's, outreach evangelism, missions, counseling, and media ministries, and there is still room for God to grow us. Our families are blessed. Our marriages are healthy and prosperous. All of our property is paid off in full, and we owe nothing to no man. Every member of this ministry's soul is prospering in the word of God and is therefore healthy wealthy and wise and we are reaching the world with the gospel through our prayers and support come on for this is a prosperous year for us and the doors of success have been opened we shall succeed in everything in christ the doors of failure have been closed and we shall know no defeat for this is a prosperous year for us 
and the doors of success have been opened. We shall succeed in everything in Christ. The doors of failure have been closed, and we shall know no defeat. Now, come on, say this like you mean it. For this is a prosperous year for us, and the doors of success have been opened. We shall succeed in everything in Christ. The doors of failure have been closed, and we shall know no defeat. And being fully persuaded that what he has promised, he is able to perform in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now, come on, let's give the Lord a hand raise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, we believe what we are confessing. The word of God says this. It says if you Hallelujah. can have yeah. what you say. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And we are, if we are speaking what the word of God says. And our faith and our belief is in Christ. Amen. And on the finished work of the cross. And we are yeah. grateful for what God is doing. Amen. So we are excited and we are confessing because God is moving. Amen. Let me tell you something. Even if you don't understand it and you don't see it, God is moving. Just wait a minute and you will see. Amen. The glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. But right now we are getting ready for our 91st Psalm. Hallelujah. We're getting ready to recite our 91st Psalm. So you sat down, get back up. Amen. If you sit down, get back up. Come on. Because you know what? You give honor where honor is due. This is God's word we are reading. So we want to confess God's word. So right where you are standing, let's get ready to confess the 91st Psalm because this is our canopy of protection. It's what keeps us and covers us on a daily basis. Amen? So prepare your heart and your mind for the 91st Psalm. Let's recite it together. You ready? Hallelujah. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and the pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all of thy ways. They shall bear thee up in thy hands, lest thy dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shall trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. My salvation. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's Come give on. the Lord a hand praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. That's Hallelujah. what we need. We need to stay under the canopy of protection. That's right. We need to stay under the covering of God. Come on, we need it. to continue to trust God to cover us, not even in this, just in this season, but in our life. Amen. And let God have his way take dominion. Come on. And, and cause us to walk as he's had us to walk. Amen. Amen. Come on. We want God to be glorified. You know, uh, we are in this series. We've been in this family series for a while and we are still in the family series. Amen. And, you know, um, we have been through a myriad of different family uh, series, uh, talking about the different television shows that we've used to just kind of be um, an attachment to these uh, this series. And today we are going to be talking about... Uh, Johnson's family vacation. Amen. That's going to be the family that we would use today, you know, because we know that, um, that was a family that had a lot of stuff going on. But as we get, before we get ready to go into that, let's right now, let's just go to the throne and, uh, lift our hearts before the Lord. Amen. That we might be able to receive what it is that he has to say to us through his word. Amen. Hallelujah. Heavenly Hallelujah. Father, Lord, we just praise you. We magnify thank you, you. Jesus. We thank you. 
thank for you, loving Lord. us. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, for giving us a revelation of your love. Yes, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you are ministering, Lord, that you're taking the thank roof, you, Lord. Lord, the thing that the lid, the thing that has held us back, and you're, you're tearing down the petitions, on, Lord, the that. things that have divided us. Lord, that we might come to a place, God, yes. that we as a family can yes, be used Lord. as a unit to glorify you. Now, Lord, have your way. You, Lord, I ask God that you would take this word and that it would permeate the hearts of the people. Lord, not just yes. those that are hearing it for the first time, but Lord, those that would hear it again. And Lord, let it reverberate yes. across the world that lives would be forever changed because of who you are in us and what you're saying to us, the body of Christ today. Yes, in Lord. Jesus' name we Hallelujah. pray. And we all said Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, come Hallelujah. on, come on, give the Lord a hand praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to challenge you, if you will, today, just to put the, to just put your last name in the chat. Just say, you know, the Johnson family or the, the Frierson family or, or whatever the Deshay, just, just, just put that in the chat. Amen. Because this thing is about God. It's God's loving his families. Amen. amen. And God doing a work, if you will, Come in on. the lives of we, his people. Amen. And, 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 I, and then once you see somebody's family name up there, purpose that you're going to pray for. Them. Amen. Purpose that, that, that throughout the coming week, you're going to pray for them and ask God to bring that back to your remembrance. Amen. 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 So we are preparing to get started on this. Amen. So go with us, if you will, this morning to Genesis, the 21st chapter Come on. and the ninth verse. Amen. Nine. And Sarah was, and Sarah was the son of and Sarah saw, excuse me, and Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had born unto Abraham, mocking. Therefore, she said unto Abraham, cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even Isaac. And the thing was very grievous unto Abraham's sight because of his son. And God said unto Abraham, let not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad and because of the bondwoman. And in all that Sarah hath said unto thee, hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac shall thy seed be called, and also the son of the bondwoman will I make a great nation, because he is thy seed. Thy seed. Amen. Amen. So, so there's some things that to just talk about because of all in the family, because you're in the family. Amen. And, and we're going to focus in on, you know, the Johnson's family vacation. But, you know, I, 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 you know, even what just comes to my mind is all in the family, you know, the bunkers, if you will. And, and they were dysfunctional, if you will, as a family. Right. But and, 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 and Archie always was giving um, Mike jabs. Right. But then there were certain things that he just got because he was in the family. Amen. Amen. But I need you to hear this because this revelation right here, if you will, all came about because Abraham didn't trust God. Amen. Because Abraham, who received the word from God and, and, and was walking in intimacy with God, right? And and Abraham did not put the faith in what God said. See, so 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 many of us, God has spoken some things about our family, and so sometimes it doesn't look like it's going to manifest, and we think we need to help God out. You see, God told Abraham to go look for a land, to go look for a place, if you will, that He would show him. But when he got there, it did not look like he thought it should look right. And so he said to himself, because sometimes we outthink ourselves. Sometimes God says, just be obedient. Sometimes God says, stand still. And you just start the fidgeting and you start to, you know, wiggling around. God said, stand still, do what God said and trust him. And then when God, and then you, you got to understand that sometimes when God says, stand still, it doesn't mean to be motionless, but it means to continue to do what I said. Because if you look at the children of Israel, when God said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, it wasn't that they were motionless, but they stood still in the promise of God. They stood still 
still in the word of God. And they went forward, if you will, through the Red Sea, Come if on. you will, on dry ground, if you will. God yeah. opened up the thing that, yes. that, that hindered them from flowing into the promise and the blessing of God. You need to understand that God is going to do that just for you. And so, and so here Abraham is, if you will, had he not been disobedient, had he not, if you will, began to think too much, because that's the problem sometimes. We think too much. And sometimes we we exclude ourselves from getting godly wisdom. Amen. You know what? God wants us to be able to hear what he is saying to us. You know, in the scripture text that Pastor Rod read, um, look, any of us, how many, I know that there are some of you out there that have people in the family or stepsisters and stepbrothers or you got, there's more than one mama, or there's more than one daddy. Come on. We talking about all in the family. We talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. And those things happen in life. And you know that if you have that in your family, sometimes you want to look at your brother, your sister, your half brother, your half sister, like something's wrong. You know, you know, we the family, y'all not the family. And there becomes strife and there becomes bitterness in that and what god is trying to show us is that's not what he's called us to but we have to get to the place that our hearts are right and our minds are right and because the word of god said god said jesus said who is my brother who is my mother who is my sister let me tell you something those those that stick to the word of God, those that serve him, those that live and love the same way that Jesus did. You know what I'm saying? And so this is what we have to realize. Yes, this world that we live in, guess what? Our families are messed up, amen? But they don't have to stay that way because in all things, it is a choice. We choose what we're going to do. We choose how we're going to do. You choose whether you're going to love uh, that, that little brother Bobo that you found out uh, that you had a brother 20 years after you was grown. You know what I'm saying? But it's still all in the family. And so what we're having to do, we, we need to pay attention. There's a definition for family is a basic unit consisting of parents and their children. Any group of parent, uh, people, blood related, those considered as descendants or common progenitor. This is another definition. A group of people that are related not by blood, but share common attitudes and attributes and frequently come together. Amen. And so, you know, that's how they ended up with, you think about gangs and, and the mafia or people that were needing, that were hurting, and they all end up coming together and they form their own little gang or their own little mafia or whatever you want to call it. And they take care of each other. Amen. And so we have to know that family is not always perfect in this life that we live in. It doesn't come the way we might think it comes, no but God has created us to have family for more than just the reason of I want to be married and with, with my husband and with my wife and 2.5 kids have a big house and, and, and is what the world would say. But God created family so that we would be together and we would not be alone. Now you need to understand that the <coughs> devil fights against the family Come on. because God loves the family. Yes, he does. He fights against the family. And I'm not just talking about your household. You know, sometimes sometimes we, we get to the place that then, then we have our own household, but then we begin to fight with mama. We begin to fight with sister. We begin to fight with uncles, cousins, nieces, and nephews, if you will. Whatever the case may be, we got to get back to the Come place on. that we, first of all, begin to recognize we need to be part of God's family. Yes. And when we're part of God's family, then it begins to extend, if you will. And we right. talked about uh, some time ago that blood was thicker than water. Amen. We need to understand that the blood of the covenant, the covenant of God Come is on. thicker than the water of the womb. Amen. Yes. And we need to have the, have the understanding of what God is saying. And we need to understand that the, that the world is an enemy of the family. Come on. Right. That, 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 that our flesh is an enemy of the family yes. and that the devil is the enemy of the family. Amen. And the world, that is the, that is the system, if you will. Right. That is the system Come that comes against the family, that tries to redefine yes. what family is, that tries to redefine what marriage is. And, and when you begin to look at the flesh, if you will, people's flesh, if you will, cause them to be weary, cause them Come not on. to want to try, cause them, you know what I mean, not to want to do the things that they should do. And the yes. devil, well, he's just that thing that just messes up and throws stuff into everything. And Amen. so we've got to get to the place that we're going to overcome, that we're not going to Come yield on, to the it. world 
that we're not going to yield, if you will, to our flesh, that we're not going to let the devil even have a toehold. Yes. Because if the devil has a toehold, he's not satisfied with a toehold. Then he'll take a foothold I'm and he's it. not satisfied with a foothold. See, he's trying to get to the place that there's a stronghold. And when there's a stronghold, people won't forgive. People won't forget. People no. won't move forward. Yes. And they always look at whatever that trespass was, whatever that hurt was, and they use that, if you will, or for an excuse not to forgive, on, not to come it. and to say, please forgive me. But God wants us to get to the place that he will be glorified. And that's when we come together, Amen. you know, even in the body of Christ, right? You know, all of these denominations, come guess on. what? He, there's one God. Come on, say it. He's not a way. He is the way. The way. And we got to get right with him. Amen. You know, because in the book of Acts, chapter 17, 26, it says this, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. What he is saying here, look, God created all men all over the earth. You know, we have all of the separations and stuff, but you know what? Look, all of us have God's blood running through our veins. We are his creation. God is no respecter of persons. You know what? One doesn't get any more than the other one gets. And God has called us all to understand the word of God and learn to live the kingdom of God life. Amen. Now we have to understand this just because you are part of the family, you know, certain things come with the family. When we think about the Johnson's family vacation, that movie, you know, when we think about that movie, yes, it was funny. We know that um, Nate and Dorothy were not in a good place in their family, just like in today, how families, some of them are not in good places and they were separated and they had children and the children, one was with the mother, you know, and, and, and one was with the, with the father or, uh, but they were separated and they all tried to come together to have a family vacation. Actually, uh, Nate's family was having a family reunion. So they decided, okay, we'll all come together to do this. But and in the process of them coming together to do that, they went through a series of mishaps and arguments and, and different things, even down to the point when they got to the family reunion, the relationship that he had with his brother, they were so competitive with each other that they couldn't do anything. I mean, they went to pray. And they were trying to pray over the food. And it went from praying over the food for them praying about what each other was doing. And this one was doing this and this one was doing that. You know, and they just ended up arguing and fighting. And what we need to see is the bigger picture where God is. God is not in all of that stuff. He's not in all of our arguing and our fighting and our bickering and our fussing. But God wants us to realize that he's called us to be a family. You know, and sometimes it is your natural family. And sometimes it is somebody that God put in your life that just loves you and is with you and cares for you and has your back. And they will tell you the truth when your family won't tell you the truth because they don't want to hurt your feelings. God put those people in your life. And we need to understand that what God has put together, the, the people that he put in your life, everything is done on purpose. Amen. And we need to understand that there is a purpose for all of it. So in the scripture text, when it said that, uh, uh, and also of the son of the bond woman, will I make a nation because uh, he is thy seed. Look, God doesn't waste your seed. Your seed is valuable. Your children are your seed. You are somebody's seed. Amen. And God doesn't waste the seed and the seed is valuable. And even though he wasn't, uh, they didn't have the same mom and the same dad. God said, I'm not going to waste him. He's going to become a great nation too. You need to understand this. If everything has not been perfect in your life, and you didn't grow up in a perfect family, guess what? You are the seed of your parents. Really, we are the seed of Abraham coming all the way down. And God will not waste that seed, amen? So he has a promise for your life. He wants to do something with you. God said we would, he would be a great nation. Guess what? God has made you some promises. And we need to learn how to stand on those precious promises. It is so important for us that we set the connection of the family in order. Amen. That we set the connection of the family to the place where God has called us to. Amen. Now check this out. You see the foundation, if you will, Come even on. in the Johnson family uh, vacation, if you will, the foundation was rocked. It was, it was crooked. And what do I mean? I mean, even before they got on the road to go to the family reunion, uh, Nate and his wife were already living in two different places. They were already functioning in a dysfunctional way. And so when you look at Abraham, if you will, there was dysfunction. And I need you to understand that whether you're married or whether you're a single parent, if you will, 
you have a responsibility, if you will, to be connected to God because God is the one that makes you a healthy family. God is the one that yes. brings you together. And you need to understand because here we were, we see, we see, if you will, uh, Abraham and Sarah functioning as, as a family unit with Isaac. <clears throat> and then we see Hagar having to go off and to be what? A single mother, mm -hmm. if you will. And sometimes, if you will, see, see, sometimes, if you will, you, you get to a place of desperation yes. because you're out there by yourself. Yeah, and she on. got to the place that she felt like she couldn't take it no more. Come she on. got to the place that she thought her son was about to die. She got to the place and God heard the cry of the lad. I need you to understand that God hears your cry, single mother, single father. God hears your cry. It. We know it's tough. We know it's Amen. hard out there. But let me tell you something. If you'll just yield yourself Come to on. God, God will not leave you yes. comfortless. God will not leave you out there by yourself. And if you are the nuclear unit, guess what? If you yield your, if you truly yield yourself to God, meaning you stop, you stop taking control. Come on, say see, that. See, how many of you know that, that, that you've been taking control and not necessarily doing all that God said? You do, you do some things, but then there's some other things you're not willing to yield to. I'm Amen. telling you, it's time to give it up and to let God take control of it, over it all. Come on, you know what? This is what we're saying in Ephesians 2 and 19. It says, now there, ye are no more strangers or, or, and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and the household of God. This is the family. This is the real family. Those that are the saints of God, those that are, that love Christ. Guess what? We are a large family. Some of them are Baptist. Some of them are Catholic. Some of them are whatever. But you know what? That's the family. Those that believe in the word of God, those that stand on the truth of, of the life that Jesus lived and died for us, those that love him and desire to be obedient to him, that is family. You know, yeah, we have blood family. And you ought to want all of your blood family in the family because it's the family of God. Amen. And so we, uh, we need to understand that we got to fellowship together. We got to love each other. Even those people that you might not understand, it's not about you. It is about God. You know, even the homeless people and how I know, you know what, some of us have some family out there that's homeless and we don't even know it. Some of us have some family out there that's lonely and we don't even know it. You got family that is hurting and broken, misunderstood, and you don't even know it. Why? Because you're just trying to take care of yours and, and what's right here. Guess what? God has called us to bigger and to more than just right here. You got to love outside of your immediate family because I tell you, the word of God says, uh, be careful what you say because you might be entertaining an angel unaware. You never know who God is putting in your path. Then God may just be testing to see if your heart is right. Or do you really love me? Do you really want to do what I want to do? So it is important that we carry ourselves and we treat our family, not just our natural family, but the family, the, the family of God, the the people for the kingdom of God. We treat everybody with the same respect. See, let me tell you something there. God is no respecter of persons. And we need to understand this. The problem with the family is this. We have uh, a distorted view of what's supposed to happen. We think that we can just do what we want, fall out. We've talked about all that before. But we need to understand this. With a family, a family is a covenant. There's a covenant relationship. When you are in the family of God, it is covenant. It's like a marriage. We are married. He, God is the bride. Uh, he's the bridegroom. You know what I mean? The church is the bride. It is a marriage covenant. Look, you don't get the covenant blessings and you're not covenant. You have to be covenant if you want the covenant blessings. You, you don't get to have the blessings of shacking up. God don't honor shacking up. I don't care who you are because it's not covenant. So you can't live together and shack up and think God's going to give you the covenant blessings. It's not going to happen. Why? Because the blood covenant is not there. So it's very important that we put things into the right order. So we need to understand this because sometimes we think we can have it just because we're in the family or we can do it just because we're in the family. You know what? That's the second thing. That's privilege. Some things you are privileged to just because you're in the family. There are some things that you can do and, and just because you're in the family. So we need to understand being in the family got privilege. Do you know what that privilege is? That privilege is called access. 
When you are in the family, you have access to certain things. Look, we are in the family of God. So God says, all of my needs, everything I want is supplied. Why? I might not have it in my hand, but I have Jesus. And because I have Jesus and I'm in the family, I have access to everything that God has. He says, I have access to all that is there. All I got to do is have faith and believe. huh? Believe and trust in the word of God. I got to believe what I'm doing. I got to walk in that way. I got to live in that way. You know what? I have to trust in that way. So just because you have access doesn't mean you have possession. Now let me say this. Let me say this because this is the reality is is that sometimes sometimes because we have family members and we don't want to offend them that we allow them to compromise in 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 in, in our realm. We allow them to do things if you will. You know, sometimes it's got to be okay if that's what you choose but you can't choose uh-huh. it. You can't do it here. Yeah. So we, we we have to get to the place that we're willing to live by God's standards because when we don't live by God's standards mm-hmm. and we allow people to to come in and to do things that aren't a, a, a part of God's Come standard. On, you you know, they can make choices on their own, but they don't have to do it in your household. Yes. They don't have to do it in your, pla- in your face. And guess what? They may not leave, but sometimes you Come have on. to choose to remove yourself from some things because what happens is, is that it causes fighting, if yes, you will. It, it causes people to be f- fickle, if you will. It causes people to do some backbiting yes. on people to, to be the, the, the crazies to come out, which means that people get fearful. Come on. And you know what? God doesn't want us to sit in that state of mind. So we need to understand this. We all, because we're in the family, we have access to the things. When you get saved, guess what? There are certain things that you have access to because God loves you. You know, the blessings and 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 if we're obedient to his word, God says, if you do this, I'll do that. He is there for us. Just like he was there before you got saved. He's the one that drew you in. But what we need to understand this is sometimes in our natural families, we think because my brother has a good job, Huh? Or my sister is a movie star or my cousin does this. Sometimes you think just because you in the family that you have access to everything that that belongs to somebody else. And what messes us up in this world is you think that you, just because your cousin gave you a backstage pass to come to her concert, you think that you get a backstage pass in life to just do whatever you want with whatever, with whoever stuff. And that's not how it works. Look, when it comes to the things of the kingdom of God, we get, we don't just get to piggyback on somebody else's prayer and somebody else's blessing. You have to get your own. You know, the family don't mind inviting you to things. The family don't mind lending you their car. The family don't mind helping you out here and helping you out there. The family doesn't mind doing it. But after a while, the family's going to say, hey, what's going on? We need to see some of your fruit, just like it is in the kingdom of God. You know, in the family of God, there are no backstage passes. God is not any respecter of person. Everybody is treated exactly the same. Amen. He gave us all the measure of faith. He's believing and trusting that each and every one of us got to stand on our own two feet at some time, hit our knees and call on Jesus. We've got to understand understand this and look just because you're in the family you don't get a pass God is requiring us to do our part what is your part that God has called you to do in the kingdom what has he called you to do what has he called you to how has he called you to live the problem is some of us don't know some of us don't know what God has called us to do because we haven't spent time talking to him. We haven't spent time praying. We haven't spent time listening. We haven't been seeking. God wants us to understand, look, everybody has to do their part. Yes, you in the family, but what is your responsibility in the family? Come on, if you are the husband or you are the breadwinner of the family, whether it's the husband or the wife, if that's your responsibility, you need to do your responsibility in the kingdom of God. Whatever God has called you to, if he called you to pray, if he called you to serve, if he called you to be a blessing or an intercessor, whatever he's called you to, that is your responsibility in the family. Amen. And because he's given that responsibility, it is your, uh, it should be your honor to do what God has called us to do. There are no special privileges. And so sometimes we think just because we in the family, that's my cousin. If my uncle got it, I got it. If this one got it, I got it. You know what? My dad used to say this all the time. Whatever, if any, whatever any of us had, he had. And that was the relationship that we had. But that was the relationship with us within the immediate family. Now, that wasn't the relationship with everybody that said they wanted to be in the family. Because when we have family reunions, there's a whole lot of us. 
And you know what we find out when we get to our family reunions? That there's a whole lot of people that are not in the family that are at the family reunion, huh? There are a whole lot of people that want to be in the family. Guess what? There are people that want to be connected to you. There are people that want to be connected to the things of the kingdom of God. And sometimes we push them away, you know, and sometimes we just let certain ones in. Let. God is no respecter of persons. He's not just picking certain ones to be part of the kingdom. He's giving the opportunity to everyone. And that's what we need to do. You've got to be able to give the opportunity to draw somebody to Christ. Not draw them to your immediate family because your immediate family don't have a heaven or hell to put them in. Your immediate family can't keep them. Look, if God can't keep them, they can't be kept. So what we need to understand is this. We need to allow ourselves to uh, have enough God in us that they can be drawn to him, amen? Not to us, because the family is about the kingdom of God, amen? God wants you to have a good family. He wants you to help people to do right and to love each other and not argue and fight and all that kind of stuff. But you know what? It takes being obedient to the word of God. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand praise. Hallelujah. Now you need to get a hold of this. See, if there's no backstage pass, if you will, in other words, in other words, there's nothing that you can do in the darkness, nothing you can do behind the curtain, if you will, if it doesn't glorify God. Hallelujah. But what God wants us to do is to get to the place that we have an all access pass, Come on. if you will, where God will favor us or God will bless us or God will. But guess what? It comes from our living relationship with the King. And we have to understand that, you know what? We need to really begin to pray for your sons, pray for your daughters, Come on. pray for your grandchildren, pray for your nieces and nephews. Why? Rather than allowing there to be a feud, rather than allowing them to throw rocks at one another, on. God wants to heal. And when you begin to throw rocks at your family, if you will, even if they're wrong, if you're throwing rocks at them, then you're, you're being used of the devil. Come now, on. don't twist it. I'm not saying that you can never speak into those issues, but if you dare to speak into Come those on. issues, Speak from a position of love. Speak from a position of helping them come up out the muck or the mire rather than just to stomp them in the ground. So many people want to point out what somebody else did wrong so that you can't look at me. But guess what? God is, see, see, we we, we, we we can't look down on somebody. On. You know what I mean? The Bible says that, that, that if you do that, you could become a part of it or come it could have been you. By the grace of God, it was not you. Amen. So guess what? Begin to reach down to those who are struggling. Begin to reach down to those who just need a little help to get over and to get better so that they can move on. Amen. And then there are those in the family that are too ashamed of what they did. Come on, say it. To even try to make it right. Come on. They done use their mouth. They've done all kinds of things. But let, let me say this to you. If that's you, purpose in your heart today that you're going to call somebody and ask for forgiveness. Come on. You won't call somebody and 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 just just let God begin to let the healing process begin. Yeah, come on. And if you were the one who was hurt, you know, my prayer is that you could that you could go and have a conversation with that person. But but open. but 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 if, if but if not, begin to pray that God would open the door that you guys can come together. Rather than just sitting back waiting for somebody or sitting back waiting for something to happen, begin to take action because God wants healing to take place. Amen. You know, he does want healing to take place. And so this is why we must realize the preciousness, the preciousness of the family. The family is precious. You know, it should be a blessing to all. You know, God doesn't want us to be alone. But see, the devil wants us to be alone. Because if the devil gets you alone, he will pick you off. Amen. In Ecclesiastes 4, it says this, two are better than one, because they have good because they have a good reward for their label. They can help each other out. God didn't want you to be alone. He doesn't want us to be alone. He wants us to have the family and he wants us to have the fellowship. But you know, we have to love each other enough to pull somebody else up when they're down to help them. You know, in that Johnson's family vacation, those brothers fought and fought and they competed. But you know what? When it came down to it, when the rubber met the road, when they needed each other, they had each other's back. You know what I mean? You don't want it to have to get bad before you realize that you have the other person's back or that you love them because God always has our back. You know what I mean? Even when we're not in the right, God is still standing there behind us, pushing us to do the right thing. Even when we're wrong, he's still loving us. He's not letting us down, didn't stop talking to me for two or three years. You know, that's not 
not the case. God is always there for us. So we need to understand the preciousness. We can do more together than we can apart. Sometimes you don't like the ones that you have in your family because what you get is what you get. You think that somebody else's family is greater. Somebody else's family is doing something better and you want to be a part of that. But let me tell you something. Stop looking outside of what God has given you and focus on where God has you. Focus on getting that right first in your own household. Let's get that right first. If there are things out of order in your household, it's time to put things back in order. It's time to quit saying, oh, I'll wait and get it done later. Or we'll do this. And no, right now, right where you are, you need to look at your husband, your wife, your children, your family, whoever's in the household. Y'all need to stand on your feet and grab hands and yoke up and begin to go to war about the things that the enemy's coming against you with. Because I tell you, with that spirit of isolating yourself you got one child that's isolated and this one don't want to be around nobody and i'm gonna stay away from everybody that's a trick of the enemy because if the devil can get you by yourself he can pick you off he'll mess with your mind he'll say they talking about you he'll say you're not loved he'll tell you you're not good enough he'll tell you you can never be enough that's a lie from the pits of hell so you go and get that family member you go get that baby go get your husband or your wife or whoever it is and you bring them to you and you let them know that that is a lie from the pits of hell and that they are welcome into the family and the kingdom of God because God can change all things. So you need to understand this with all that's within you. Don't let the devil pick you off. Don't let him pick your babies off. Don't let him pick your family members off because they feel isolated because they've gotten out there making a choice that was, wasn't a God. Whether it was their fault or somebody else's fault, don't leave them out there for the enemy to pick off. Come on, we living in a world where people are leaving here left and right. Make sure that you have things in order with your family. Make sure that your relationships are what they're supposed to be. Don't wait till something go bad to tell somebody that you love them. Don't wait till something is wrong for you to show any kind of emotion that you care. If you know somebody's lonely, do something to help them. Go see them. Go visit them. Call them on the phone. Don't let the enemy pick them off because that's what his plan is. I'll isolate you. I'll make you think you're not good enough. You're not part of the family. And then I'll pick you off. I'll isolate you to the point to have you take your own life. Or have you live in such a way that you don't want to be bothered with anybody. Why? Making you miserable in your life. That's the devil's plan. It's to mess with your mind and get you off of the things of God so you can't concentrate on the things of God. So we've got to understand this. Look, family is precious. It is a gift. Whether you like who's in it or not, get over yourself. Amen? Find the love of God and get with that person or those people or whoever they are and help them to know they are part of the body. If you don't even receive them as your own personal blood family, they're still part of the body. And if you love Jesus and you're part of the body, then the responsibility is to love them. Amen? Regardless, you don't have to like them, but you do need to love them with the love of Christ. Come on, let's give God a hand praise this morning. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Only what you do for Christ Come on. will last. Yes. Hear me. Only what you do for Christ yes. will last. Now hear this because, because, because you know what? We have some family members that have chosen to do it their way. Come on. Stop co-signing on what they do. Stop telling other people to get back off of them. You know, that many times, many times we've been called to, to help those that, that hate us, if you will. The Bible says that you are to what? Love those that hate you. Bless them that despitefully use you. Come on. You know what? I, I wish I could say that there are never, there's never been anybody that hated me or there was never anybody that despitefully used me. Amen. But you know what? That'd be, that'd be a lie. Come on. Because there've been a whole lot of people for whatever reason decided they wanted to be a hater or despite it, they wanted to get what they could get. And when they couldn't get it, they moved on. Come on, say that. And and even after they did that, God has caused and opened up opportunities for me to still be used in their life. Come and on. I had to do it what? With a loving heart. Come on. Hear me. You're going to have to love those people. Come on, say that. Who hate you. Amen. Or, 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 or love those people who have a very strong dislike for you. Amen. You know what I mean? You got to be, you got to let the love of God transcend whatever situation it is. Amen. So that he's glorified. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And you know, we have to know that last thing is the purpose, the purpose of the family. You know, 
um, God created the family for a purpose, mm -hmm. amen, mm -hmm. to keep us together. You know, he, he created the family. In um, Genesis 4 and 9, it says this, And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? I'm asking you this question this morning. Are you your brother's keeper? You know, some of us want to say, he's grown. He can do his own thing. Or, She's grown. She can do her own thing. What did God say here? Come on. Huh? He asked the question, where is he? Let me tell you something. If there's somebody out there that's hurting, that's lost, that's sick, whatever the issue is, you need to find out what's going on. You need to find out about them. You need to let them know that somebody cares about them. Amen? You can't just say, well, that ain't my responsibility. They three times seven. They live in their life like they want to. You know what? They are. But if they are not living for God, they are lost. And as a child of God, it is your responsibility to plant a seed. Even if they don't receive it right now, even if they can't say, yes, I want to do this right now, you need to at least call them and plant the seed in their life and tell them that they're loved and that Jesus loves them. Amen. That is the purpose. Family is what, what brings us connected together. God wants unity. All of our families need to learn how to come together and connect Huh? On the spiritual things, in the spirit first, not just in the natural, because we can gather in the natural, we can laugh, we can hug each other, we can cry, we can do all of that stuff, and everybody will leave and be mad at each other, and nobody said anything. God doesn't want that anymore. It's time to do things for real. We need to love God with our whole heart and let God be glorified in all things that we do. The purpose is for God to bring the family together in unity. Don't let there have to be a tragedy before you seek God in unity in your family. Don't let God have to, don't let somebody have to die. Don't let there have to be an accident. Don't let something horrible have to happen before you realize and recognize and appreciate, huh? What God is giving you in your family and in your loved ones and in those that you spend time with and those that are kingdom family or blood family. Don't let uh, there have to be something major. Did it have to be a pandemic for us to realize that we need to focus back on God? Don't let there have to be something that turns your attention back to God, huh? Don't let something have to happen. We are in this pandemic, huh? Because the world is a mess and we yeah, needed something to happen in order to turn us back to God, amen? And if you have not been seeking God, if you have not to turn back to God. If you are not trying to encourage everybody to pay attention to what the word of God says, that's what this pandemic is about. It's time for us to seek God again. We have gotten some America, this nation has gotten so far away from the things of God and the principles of God. We've got to understand God intended for us to be a family, the kingdom of God. And we have to pursue that with all that is within us. You know what? We need to have a family reunion. Hmm? The kingdom family reunion. Everybody's invited. Huh? Jew, Gentile, rich, poor, fat, skinny, cute, white, ugly. Black. White, black, green, purple, and yellow. Everybody can come. One leg, no legs. One eye, no eye. Everybody's invited to come. And we want to see everybody show up for the kingdom <laughs> reunion. Huh? Because some of us going to come in limping. <clears throat> some of you will come in all dressed up. Some of you will come in dragging. It's not about what you look like or where you've been. But did you show up? Come on. God wants us to show up. He wants us to show up for the things of the kingdom. He wants you to show up. If you ain't serving like you're supposed to serve, guess what? It's time to show up. If you ain't living like you're supposed to live, it's time show to up. show up. If you ain't giving like you're supposed to give, it's time to show, show up. up. If you are not being a good husband or a wife, guess what? It's, it's time, time to, to show up. up. If you are not doing what God has called you to do, it's, it's time, time to, to show up. up. And so God wants y'all to understand this this morning. Come on, it's time to show up. Don't just drive up to the reunion, huh, in your fancy car trying to impress everybody. Get out of the car and let the Spirit of God show up in you. That's what we're looking for, the Spirit of God to show up in us. We're not looking for what you show up in or anything else. We're looking for the Spirit of God to show up in us, amen? We've got to allow God to use us to the best of our abilities. That's what the family reunion is about. That's what family is about, coming together. The word of God says that we're better together. 
Two can do more than one. It says that one can put a thousand to flight. But two, two can, can put, put 10,000 to flight. flight. Come on, if we can just yoke up together. As family, on one accord, huh? Come on, no differences, no fussing, no fighting, no arguing. But show up with your heart right and your mind right and the right desire and the right purpose. And not just thinking about yourself, but show up to be something for somebody else. Amen? Show up for the kingdom of God. Show up. What's in you? What you got to give? You know what my baby always says is, Mama, I don't want to die empty. Uh-huh. I want to die empty. I don't want to die with everything that God promised me and everything that I was supposed to have and do that I didn't do. You know what? We ought to be empty. Give out what God has given you. Get the dreams and the visions for your family and for your life and trust God. Because you know what? When you show up, you empty out the things that God has given you. Allow God to use you. If it's just to say, I love you. Now, let me say this. Hallelujah. You got to get to the place. Come on. If you're not your brother's keeper, you're your brother's killer. Come on, say that. If you're not your brother's keeper, you're your brother's killer. Because you're not helping. Because you're not helping. And when God said to Cain, where is your brother? That wasn't just about a physical location. See, see, sometimes we think, oh, well, they down, they down there on the points, or they, they in Park Hill, or they you know, over in Aurora. You know, it's not about the physical location. Where all. are they spiritually? And guess what? You know, you need to be able to locate them spiritually, spiritually and begin to speak into their life. Now, some people won't allow you to speak into their life. But let me say this. If they choose to reject the, the, the love and the word Come that you're on. bringing, they're not rejecting, rejecting you, you, they're rejecting God. Yes. And they may not say that, but that's what they're doing. If you're on God's Come assignment, on. because many times we're on God's assignment and someone chooses not to receive. And let me tell you something. You see, you see that hate, that division, that's of the devil. No matter Amen. how hard somebody wants to stand on it, that's of the devil. Amen. And God wants us to operate in love. Hallelujah. So it's time for us to show up. Come on, you know, and we got to show up because... I'm going to give you this one last thing. You know, Joseph was showing up for his brothers and they didn't even know it. And it wasn't until God revealed it to him that he knew that he was showing up for God. Amen. And so we need to understand this. You know that Joseph, uh, his brothers threw him in the pit, huh? They ended up selling him. He went down into Egypt. He became Potiphar's servant. We know that he went through all of that. Potiphar's wife lied on him. He went to jail, huh? They ended up getting him out of jail and, and he became... Uh, in charge of everything. You know what? This is what we need to understand. God might take you through a series of highs and lows, huh? You might go through hell and high water, but God has a plan and God wants us to submit ourselves to him so that we can follow the plan. It wasn't always good and it wasn't always happy for Joseph, but you know what? When Joseph realized when the, there was a famine in the land and he realized huh, the position that God had put him in, then he began to see God put me here. So that I could be a blessing to my family. There was a famine going on in the land, huh? But God put me here so that I could be a blessing to my family. Sin so this four. is why we say you got to show up for what God calls you to. Even if you don't like how it feels. Even if it's not what you want to do. It's not about you and what you want to do. Show up. And ask God what you're supposed to do. And I guarantee you, he'll take care of your family. Because when his brothers came down to buy food, huh? Because there was a famine in the land. Who was there? Joseph was right there. He showed up. Because he was in the position that God would have him to be in. And then he came to the point that he could finally reveal himself to his family. And guess what? He didn't say, y'all know what? Y'all threw me in the pit. I went through hell. Guess what? Get up out of here. That's not what he said. He began to cry and he began to weep and he began to tell him, look, I'm your brother Joseph and I love you and don't worry. I'm not mad at you. I know that it wasn't about you, but I was doing what God called me to do. God did this for a reason so that I would be here so that I could bless you, huh? That I could take care of you, my family. See, God has a plan in the works for the family. We just got to let God work it out. And then all of the rest of the family came and they were there and he welcomed them into the family, huh? And they supped together and they lived together. Let me tell you something. That's all God is asking. Go get the family. Hallelujah. Even if you don't know their name, if they on the streets, wherever they are, go get the family and bring them in, huh? Bring them in. God will do the work. You just plant the seed. So God is telling us, I want you to show up. I want you to tell your family other members, it's time to show up. Amen. 
We want to make sure that we are giving God all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Come on, let's give God a hand praise this morning. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. You know what? We need to be able to receive it. God is connecting us to each other. And when you are connected, I talked about this earlier. When you get connected to somebody, it becomes covenant. Me and Pastor Ron have a covenant relationship, huh? As husband and wife. We have a covenant relationship. And then we have a covenant relationship as husband and wife with God. We have our own individual covenant relationships with God. God wants you to have that covenant relationship in your family and with him. And as a family, with him. Because with the covenant comes the blessings. So if you are not receiving the blessings, you're not receiving the healings, you're not receiving all the things you ask it and trust it for, why? Is there a breach in your covenant? Come God on. wants to know, is there a breach in your covenant? That covenant relationship is your God relationship. You got to take care of that relationship. Yes, you are your brother's keeper. If that's what it takes to get the covenant moving in your direction, if that's the one thing that's hindering you, you need to do what you need to do to get it right. Because you don't get the covenant blessings of the word if you are not in covenant relationship. And you got to be in covenant relationship with God. Amen. That is a blood covenant. That is sealed. huh? That is a sure thing. There's nothing that can break it and nothing that can change it. We've got to trust God. And that's what God is looking for for us. He wants us to show up. huh? Show up so that we can have access to the covenant blessings of God as a family and as a whole. Amen. That we would come together in unity, giving God glory. Now Hallelujah. We, we want you to do. See, I asked you to put your name, your family Hallelujah. name in the chat. Hallelujah. But before you sign off today, I want you to put in the chat. You know, I'm not asking for no details or anything like that. But put in your chat um, different families that just need prayer. Hallelujah. You know, it doesn't matter whatever it is, but we're going to pray over these families. And, and we're going to encourage everybody that sees this that they would pray yes. over the families. Amen. Yes. Because it's about kingdom. Come it's on. about us shaking off the dust. It's Come about on. us recognizing that the devil is the one that comes to divide and, and he's come to kill, steal, and destroy, Amen. if you will. But God has come that we might have life and that life I more abundantly. abundantly. So let's move forward. And let me ask you, let me say this point blank. If you know if you know that you've been away from the family, you know that you've been estranged for the family, Amen. stop sitting back and waiting for somebody to come to you, but come you on. go to them. Yes. But, but, but let's start right here. If you know you've been away from God. Come on, say that. You need to rededicate your life. How do you know? Because you've been living any kind of other way. Amen. You didn't want to hear anything about God. Or you pick and choose. Come on. Or you have never received him. Yes. Let this be the moment that you say, I'm coming back. Come on. And if that's you, just put it in the chat. I'm coming Come back. back. I'm coming Hallelujah. home. <clears throat> or I just want more. Hallelujah. You know what I mean? Pray Amen. with me. Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. Lord, I come humbled. Because I choose Thank to humble Jesus. myself. Yes, Lord. I choose to seek your face. Thank you, Jesus. I choose to, to look to you. Yes. And so I thank you that you sent Jesus thank Christ, you, who was born of a virgin. Yes, Jesus. Who lived a, a sinless, sinless life. exemplary life. Come on. He willingly went to the cross. Yes, he did. Say, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Jesus. I know you rose again on the third day. Come into my heart. Hallelujah. And be my Savior Amen. and my Lord. In Jesus' Hallelujah. name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, let me tell you something. You know, you've come back to the family, right? But then you've got to connect with the family. You come can't on. still go out there and just be by yourself. Amen. God says, don't forsake the assembly. And even if our assembly right now is online, it's online. But you know what? You can pick up the phone and you can call your mother. You can call your brother. You can call your, your, your cousin. You can call whomever. You can call your pastor. Amen. Amen. And then let God begin to love and to lead and to bring you back to that place. Amen. You know, God wants us to move forward. And, and soon and very soon, you know, uh, we are going to come back to be in person. But for now, we're here online. So let's make sure that we're connecting and we're loving one another through Amen. this thing. Amen. You know what? God is so good. He is an awesome God, you know, and and we love him so much and we know that you love him so much. But come on, we need to be faithful. We you ought to have I, you guys ought to have some joy and excitement. Come on, we just finished a fast. 
And when you finish fasting, you're giving God all that you can. You spend time in prayer and in study. There's something on the inside of you that don't just let you sit down and accept what you used to accept. Amen. Come on, if you were really in it to, to hear God and to talk to God. And some of you have not finished your fast yet. You know, some of you started it late. But you know what? Carry through this with everything that is within you. Amen. Seek God. So, you know, there are times when we put things out on the outside so that we can seek God. And, and that's all we're doing. Make this that time. Why? Make it a covenant connection. Amen. A covenant connection with God that you renew and restore any connection that might have been broken. Amen. Because God has us lots of blessings and privilege for us when we just seek him and stay covenantly connected. God wants us to, to be our best, but we have to give God our best. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give God a hand praise. Hallelujah. Cause we love him because he's King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And we will see you next time. Amen. May the blessing of God rest upon you. Amen. Be Go blessed. forward. Atmosphere is changing, nothing stays the same. Heaven is waiting at the mention of the name. The spirit is moving, burning like a flame, healing the broken by the one we proclaim. Raise it up, fill the sky. Chains will fall, mountains move, we lift him high. Speak the name, the name above all the names. Speak the name, the name the wind and waves obey. All of heaven. Hostages of shame, miracles unfolding at the mention of the name. Now darkness is fleeing.